we are going to look at the first assignment, which is due on the 1st of March. So this assignment, it covers through chapters two to 3.2. So I'm sure that chapter one is about, it's just an introduction. They don't examine it. Question one, it reads, Patrick borrows money from Zanele. It is symbol discount rate of 9.75% per annum. He must pay him 35,000 rent in 27 months time. The amount of money that he receives from Zanelli now is. So the first thing is for you to identify the type of rate that you're given. So here it says it's a simple discount rate. So anything which is a simple discount rate, you are going to make use of your formulas on the formula sheet. Right. So it's always a good habit for you to know which particular formulas you can find in the formula sheet. So I'm going to see out that throughout this module, you are going to be making use of your financial calculator, is it? And also the scientific calculator, but basically you need to use the financial calculator. So when you're given a question, you have to ask yourself, do I need to check the formula on the formula sheet? Or rather, am I just going to use my financial calculator without making use of the formula sheet? So I'm going to take you all the different steps that you are going to need, either to use um, a formula sheet or when you're using your financial calculator. So you just need to give yourself some time to go through these different types of formulas. But with practice, you will eventually know which formula to find in the formula sheet and which one can you not find in the formula sheet. So like I said, on this question, if it is anything simple, if there's a simple rate of interest, with a simple discount, you have to use the formula from the formula sheet. So which formula are you going to use? Right. So with let's- Simple discount. Yes, the one with the simple discount, that is very correct, right. But for those that might not know which formula to use, what you can simply do is to identify the variables which are given in that particular question. So let's analyze this question. Patrick borrows money from Zanin then it is a simple discount rate of 9.75%. So what you're giving here 9.75, it is actually a simple discount rate. So we use small letter D to represent the discount rate. So you're given a discount rate D, which is equivalent to 9.75%. Then he must pay him 35,000 in 27 months time. So this amount that you're given here, that he's supposed to pay back in the future, which is 35,000. What variable do we call it? Which variable is this? The, you say the, the, the 35%, the 35,000 is an S. Yes, so Mapula, you said this 35,000 represents what? Which variable is this? It's variable S. Yes, S. The, the future, the future base. Yes. So S represents an amount that will be paid in the future. So any amount that is payable in the future, we call it a future value. And we use small letter S for it. Then this amount of 35,000 is supposed to be paid after 27 months. So the, the 27 months, which variable is it? 
it is your time, is it? T. It's the time. We use T to represent time, yes. Then the question says, the amount of money that he receives from Zaneli now, so the amount that is received presently, which variable do we use for that? The P. Yes, we use P. P is a present value, which means the amount that is received or invested now. Right. So as you can see, we have got uh, four variables. We have got D, T, P, and S. So you want to find a formula which connects these four variables. So you can look for it on the formula sheet. Right. So like what uh, Mapule you said, we are actually going to use formula number three. As you can see, there's got P, S, D, and T. So let's copy and paste that formula. P is equals to S open bracket one minus T T. So this formula, it gives you the relationship between these four variables. To calculate the present value, which is P, this is equals to S, which is the future value, then open bracket one minus D, which is the discount rate times T, which is time. And this question asks you to determine the present value, which means the amount that is being received now. So we're going to substitute, that will be the next step. We have copied and pasted the formula from the formula sheet. Then the next step would be to simply substitute for the known variables, right? So in our formula, we don't know the value of P. So we're going to reproduce it. So P is equals to S, what is the value of S? 35,000. 35,000. Right, we're just simply replacing for the known variables. Then one, one is just a number, so we copy as it is. So it's one minus, then for D, the discount rate is 9.75%. So the discount rate, we normally put it as a decimal. Here is given as a percentage, 9.75%. So how do you convert a number from a percentage to a decimal? You divide it by 100. Yes, you divide by 100. So it's 9.75. If you divide it by 100, what do you get? 0 0.0975. So try to remember it whenever you're using your formula, the percentage you write it as a decimal. Right. Then times, what about T? It's uh, 27 divided by 12. Why are you dividing 27 by 12? Because 12, it, it means the actual year, and then the 27, it represents the, time, the months that we supposed to yes. pay him. So there is this consistent rule your discount rate and your time, they should be consistent in terms of their time. Is it? Like the discount rate, it's per annum. Annum, which means per year. So if the discount rate is given per year, then automatically your time should also be presented in, in years. Yeah. So as you can see, this time here, on the given information, our time is given in terms of months. So we have to convert from months into years. So how do you convert 27 months into years? You divide by 12. So it is very important for you to always take note of that. The rate of interest or discount in time, they have to be consistent to each other. If the rate is per annum, then your time has to be per annum. I mean, in terms of number of years.
Then if the discount rate is given pay, if it was per month, then your time it has to be in months. If the discount rate was given per week, then your time was also supposed to be in weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for you to always remember to, I mean, to have consistency between the rate of interest and in time. Mm -hmm. Right. So the next step is to simply plug in these numbers into your calculator. So for this case, you don't really need to use um, the financial calculator, is it? It's just straightforward mm -hmm. numbers. So if you've got a scientific calculator, you can use it. Even that financial one, it's too fine. You can simply put these numbers, it's okay. It works perfect. Right. So I'm not going to show you on the screen how you are going to put these numbers onto the calculator. Right. I'm assuming that it's quite easy to do that. Right. But I'm going to be telling you what I'll be doing on my calculator here. So it's 35,000, then open bracket, one minus 0 0.0975 times 27 divided by 12, then close bracket. And if you do that, what answer are you getting? Mapula, what answer did you get? We're getting 27321.875. To two decimal places, which means it becomes 0.8888. Eight. Eight, eight. So that is the amount that has been borrowed by Patrick from Zanel. He's borrowing 27,321.88. Then after 27 months time, he's going to pay back 35,000. So for question number one, the correct answer is, is option one. Then moving on to question number two. It reads, on 29 March, 2022, Justin deposited 3,500 into a savings account. The simple interest rate agreed upon was 7.5% per year. The accumulated amount in the savings account on 10 October, 2022 is how much? Then are given a note, ignore the leap year unless it is specified that it is a leap year. Right. So let's analyze this given question. Remember the first thing that I said you should take note of is on the type of interest rate that you're given, is it? Mm -hmm. So in this case, you're given a simple interest rate. So anything simple, it's easier for you to use a, a formula from the formula sheet. So which formula are going to use? Before you can pick a formula, let's identify the variables which are given, is it? Mm -hmm. So here it says on 29 March, 2022, which means this is time, right? So in a way you are in a position to determine what T is but we don't know uh, what time is uh, more precisely is it? because you're only given date, like a starting date on 29 March, 2022, right? So it goes from 29 March, 2022 up to 10 October of the same year. So from 29 March to 10 October of the same year, we can be in a percent to determine the number of days which are there. But I will show you how you can do that, right? Then Justin deposited 3,500 into a savings account. So this amount of 3,500, which was deposited into a savings account, what variable is it? An amount deposited, what variable is it? Is it a P or is it an S? Remember P is a present value, S is a future value. It's the present value. Yes, the present value. Right. 
So the amount that is deposited, we use P to represent it, which means you are depositing it presently or currently. Right. So we have got our second variable. We've got the T, of course, we're going to determine what T is. Now we've got the P. Right. Then the symbol rate, the simple interest rate agreed upon was 7.5% per year. So this 7.5% per year, which variable is it? It's the D. Is it's it a D? D? No. Remember, it's D is for simple discount. So for this one, if the it's simple R. interest, then we use I or R for it. So there are quite a number of notations that we use to represent different types of variables in financial mathematics. Right. So for a simple interest rate, we use R or I to represent it. Right. So R is 7.5%. So that is our third variable. Then the question says, the accumulated amount in the savings account on 10 December 2022 is how much? So the accumulated amount, what variable do we use for it? It's the S. Yes. And you don't know how much it is. That's what you want to determine. So I'm going to put a question mark. Right. So an accumulated amount, this is an amount in the future, isn't it? It accumulates into the future. That is why we're using S to represent the accumulated amount. So we use S to represent an amount in the future. Right. But before we look at the formula, we also still have to calculate T. And in this case, it's easier for you to determine T in terms of days, is it? From mm -hmm. 29 March to 10 October of the same year. So to do that, you don't have to use a calendar from, from your phone or from, from your whatever device that you're using. You have to check on the formula sheet. Right. So if you check on the formula sheet, on the first page, it gives you the actual formulas. Then on the second page, it gives you the number of each day of the year. So this is the part that you're going to use to determine the number of days from a particular date up to another particular date. Right. So in our case in question, you want to determine the number of days from 29 March to 10 October. Right. So if you check, let me put this stuff there. Right. If you check here, okay, before I could put it back, let me, let me just show you how it's, it works. Right. So we've got day, day number one, two, three, four, right? Mm -hmm. Then we also have got a month. So we've got January all the way to December, right? Then of course, on each particular month, the depending on what month it is, we have got a maximum of 31 days, is it? Each month has got a maximum of 31 days, depending on which month we are looking at, is it? But the highest month has got 31 days, right? So for example, if you're looking at um, it one January, one January is day number one, right? Yeah. Then, all the way up to 31 January. 31 January is day number 31, right? Mm -hmm. Then what about 1 February? 1 February. 1 February is day 30. number 32. 32. It's day number 32 from, from 1 January. Remember, we are always counting from 1 January, is it? So 1 February from 1 January, there are 32 days. The same applies when you just pick any other date, is it? For example, if you choose a maybe 11 May, is it? You're going to go to 11, then 11 May. So 11 May, we are here. Where the month and the day intersect 
you've got the day number, is it? Right. Mm -hmm. So 11 May, it is day 131 from, mm -hmm. from 1 January. Mm -hmm. The same applies when you also look at 31 December, is it? Right. I can also mm -hmm. look from the other side, whichever part is closer. Right. So 31 is here. Then December, so December, December 31, it is day 365. So make sure that you're in a position to properly read these dates. Because sometimes it can be a bit tricky to read the dates. So make sure that you're in a position to, to read properly these dates. So from 29 March, let's look at 29 March. This is March. March 29, scroll down. March 29, it is day what? 88. Day 88. 88. Yes. Then, right, let me put it down here. So we just put it here. 29 March, it is day 88, right? Then uh, we also have got 10 October. October, I think, is the 10th month. Day 283. Let's check together. Uh, oh. This is 10. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, just to... All right, let me just finish this. I'll, I'll attend to you just now. Right. So October. Okay, cool. October 10. This is October. And this is 10. So October 10, which day is it? Day 283. Day 283. Excellent. Right. So we can be able now to determine <clears throat> the value of T. Right. Remember we say that T is the number of, we say that T is the number of days from okay. 29 March to 10 October of the same year, right? So to determine the va value of T, we're going to say 283 minus 88. What answer do you get? 195. 195, excellent. Then what are the units of T? Days. Yes, we are measuring our time in days. So that is very, very important for you to know. Each variable is get units, is it? We measure T in, in days, just like P. P and S, this is money. We measure them in, in runs. That's why it's 3,500 runs. So sometimes it becomes important for you to know the units that we use for each particular variable, especially for time and the rate of interest, is it? Like, is it per year, per week, or per something, is it? Mm. Then the next step is to identify now the correct formula from the formula sheet that connects these four variables. R, T, P, and S. Let us check. We go to the first page of the formula sheet. So which formula connects our four variables, S, P, R, and T? It's the S, S equals to P, yes. Hmm. Formula number two. Yes. Usually for something simple, either a simple discount rate or a simple interest, it's usually these first three formulas that you have to pick from. So in this case, you're going to pick this second formula. S is supposed to P, open bracket, one plus, one plus RT. So let's copy and paste that formula. Write it here. S is equals to P, open bracket, one plus RT. Right. We have copied and pasted the formula. 
from the formula sheet. What is your next step? What is the next step? You're going to substitute the terms. You're going to substitute now. Right. So let's substitute for the known variables. S, do we know the value of S? We don't know, is it? That's why you're putting no, a question no. mark. That is what we're actually calculating. So S is equals to, do we know the value of P? Yes. 3,500. Then open bracket, yes, one. One is just it's a number, you, see, you can't substitute for it because already it's a number. Then plus, what about R? Seven zero point zero seven five. Yes. So because the rate of interest is given as a percentage. So if you're using a formula like what I mentioned earlier on from question number one, if you're given a percentage, you have to convert it from percentage to a decimal only if you are using a formula to solve that problem. But if you're using a financial calculator, as you're going to see, we don't convert from a decimal, I mean, from a percentage to a decimal. We usually maintain it as a percentage, right? So converting from percentage to decimal, you divide by 100, like what label is done, is it? So 7.5, if you divide it by 100, you get 0.075. 0 0.075. 0 Excellent. So that is the value of R. Now, because you've got RRT, RRT, it means you're multiplying. You're multiplying R by T. So it's R times T. So 0 0.075 times T. Then the value of T, we just computed it. It's 195. Right. But like I said before, you have to be careful, is it? You always have to ask yourself that consistent thing, is it? The rate of interest and the time, these two, you have to be consistent to each other, is it? If the rate mm -hmm. is given per year, then your time has to be measured also in, mm -hmm. in years. So let's check on the given info. For ARA, ARA is pay per year. Mm -hmm. That means your time, it has to be in what? Mm -hmm. In years. Yes. So we have to convert from days, is it? That's why I said that at the time, make sure you know the units for time. So time here is in days. So how do you convert from days into years? You divide by 365. Yes. So you're going to divide this by 365. Then the next step is to simply plug in these numbers into your calculator, then it gives you the answer, is it? So I'm not going to show you how we are putting these numbers. I assume that is something that is quite straightforward to do that. But I'll be just saying it out as I'm putting the numbers. You can also try to do it on your own. We have got 3,500, the open bracket, one plus 0 0.075 times 195 divided by 365. Close bracket. At what answer did you get? 3,640.24. Thank you, Lebo. We're getting 3,640. Right. Then the degree of accuracy, you check on the given answers. All of your answers, they are given to two decimal places. Mm. So that is a guide in terms of the degree of accuracy. So your answer is supposed to be to two decimal places, right? So to two decimal places becomes 0. 0.224, is it? It was 0. 0.239 something, something. The rounding off to two DP becomes two, four, right? I'm sure all of you, you don't have any problem in terms of rounding off numbers, right? So that is the correct answer for question number two. So let's see from the given options. Do we have an answer like this? Yes. yes it's the first option. So question two, the correct answer, it is option number one. Question three, it reads, 
an investment of 20,000 rand accumulated to 45,200 rand. If the applicable simple interest rate is 12% per year, then the time under consideration is how much? So since you're given a, or since the question has to do with simple interest rate, that means you're going to be making use of our formula sheet. Anything simple, use the formula sheet. But as you are going to see any, something that is compound, then in that case, it's easier. You can use a calculator, of course, in the formula sheet, but it's easier for you to use a calculator if it's compound interest. Right. So for simple interest, use a formula sheet. So before you use the formula sheet, uh, you need to identify the given variables, is it? Let's identify the given variables. It's an investment of 20,000 rand. So this 20,000 rands, which variable is this? Is it a future value or it's a present value? It's a present value. This is a present value. So we use P for present value. Then this amount of 20,000, it accumulated to 45,200. So the 45,200, which variable is this? It's the future value S. Yes, we use S for the future value. If the applicable simple interest, so it's a simple interest of 12%, which variable or which letter do we use for simple interest rate? We use R. Uh -uh. So R is 12%. Then the question says the time under consideration is. So we are determining the value of T, which is the time. Right. So I'm going to look at the formula sheet again and identify a formula which connects these four variables P, S, R, and T. Which formula can we use? The second one. Yes, we're going to use the second one. Or even the first one can work. But however, the problem now with this one, you need to know I, but we can identify I, is it? Which is the interest. But however, let's use formula number two. So formula number two, it says S is equals to P, open bracket one plus RT. The question asks is you to determine the value of T. But if you look on the formula that we've copied and pasted, T is actually inside the bracket. So what we have to do before we can substitute for the non variables, we have to make T the subject of the formula. We have to say T is equals to something, something. T is equals to something, something in terms of S, P, and R. Just like S, S is a subject of formula, is it? Because it's expressed in terms of P, R, and T. So we have to do the same thing with T. T has to be expressed in terms of S, P, and R, is it? To say T is equal to something, something. So in a way, we have to rearrange this formula. So how do you rearrange the formula? We are going to take everything, is it? In this case, let's take everything that doesn't have T into the left-hand side. Right. Remember, we have got an equation here. An equation has got two sides. It has got a left-hand side, which is equal to the right-hand side. That is an equation. It has got two sides, which are separated by an equal side, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So this is the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side. <clears throat> right. So what we want to do, we want to take everything which doesn't have a T into the left-hand side. Right. So already on the left-hand side, there's S, right? 
So we're going to maintain it. Then going on to the right hand side, we have got this P. So you want to take a P from the right hand side into the left hand side. How do we do that? We multiply. Can you, you speak divide up? both sides by P? Okay, let me hear from Mapula first. Mapula, can you speak up a little bit? What do we do? I'm not sure. I think we multiply it. Okay, why are we multiplying it? I'm not sure. Oh, oh you're just guessing, eh? Mm. Mapula, can you speak up a little bit? I was just guessing. All right, all right. No, it's fine. No problem. I, mean, I know we are a bit last year, but I know mm. uh, you should be quite familiar with this stuff. What about label? What's your suggestion? Um, you're gonna divide both sides by p to cancel the p on the other side. Yeah. So Why are we dividing? Be, because we want to make t this uh, t the subject of the formula. So we we divide both sides by p so that mm -hmm. the p on the on the other side on the equation side it mm -hmm. disappears because it's gonna cancel out. Yes, yes, that is very correct. Is it? So because this P is multiplying, is it? A bracket means multiplication, right? So what happens now, when you're taking a variable from one side to the other side, you do the opposite of what it is doing, is it? P on the right-hand side, it's multiplying. Bracket, it means multiplication. So if ever it removes from where it is multiplying and go to the other side, it does the opposite of that. So the opposite of multiplication is? <laughs> So we're going to divide S will divide by P. Then on the right hand side, you'll be left with one plus R T. I'm going to do it step by step. Then we have removed the P in the brackets. The brackets they just go away because they just represent multiplication. You're multiplying by P. Then the next step is to remove this one. One on the right-hand side, it's adding, is it? Of course, you've got a plus here. It's adding to RT. So what is the opposite of addition? Subtraction. Subtraction, is it? So if one goes to the left-hand side, it has to subtract to minus. Right? So it goes to RT. Then the last step is to remove this R. Right? Remember, the main objective is to isolate T. We just want to, to be left rather with a T on the right hand side. Right? Then this R, it's multiplying by T, is it? So, how do you remove R? If something is multiplying, divide. yes, it divides again. Right? Mm -hmm. So, in this case, we're going to divide. Remember, on the left hand side, there is there are these numbers, is it? There's S over P minus one. Then you divide it by R. This is equals to T. Then when you are there, you are closer, is it? The next step, I'm just rewriting it again. I'm starting with the T. So we're saying that T is equals to S over P minus one, everything divided by R. Then the next step is to substitute. We know what the value of S is. It's given as 45,200. Then you divide it by P. P is given as 20,000. Then you subtract one. Everything you divide by R. Right. What is the value of R? 12% is it? From percentage to decimal, so, so now can you put these numbers into the calculator? Right. So this part can be a bit tricky. I know some students, they might not be able to correctly put this number or this fraction rather into the calculator. So I'm just going to show you now how you are going to put this into the calculator. But if you know it, then it's, it's a bonus for you, eh?
but I'm just going to show you now. So what you can see on the screen is, um, is the scientific calculator that I'll be using to go do some computations. Right? It's easier to, to use when you're dealing with fractions, is it? It's easier to use a, a, a sharp or even in, uh, I don't know, the sharp, what else do we have? Or oh, a casio, yeah. That way it was uh, running out of my mind, a casio. So this one looks like a casio. It's a soft copy version. You can download it on Google Play. Right. Then since you're dealing with a fraction, you can tap here. Right. So if you tap, then this appears on your screen. Right. On the numerator, we've got a fraction. So I'm going to tap a fraction again. You see my case, it's highlighting the numerator. Then if you tap this one again, we can have a fraction on top of another fraction, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Then on the numerator of our fraction, we have got 45,200. So I'm typing in 45,200, right? So it's a bit slow to show on the screen, right? Then you go on the denominator of our numerator, so it's 45,200 divided by 20,000. Right. Then you move your cursor to this point by means of an arrow. You just tap on your forward arrow. If you tap on your forward arrow, it moves to this position. Right. Then we have got a minus one. We've got minus, this is my minus. Then divided by, I want to go to this part, so you can move, use your down arrow. If you tap on the down arrow, the case is gonna move to this part. So you're dividing by 0 0.12. So we divide by 0 0.12, then my answer is 10.5 times 10 to the power of zero, right? So it's, it's giving my answer in, in a scientific notation. Right. So if you're not familiar with the scientific notation, you just step on more, then it gives you the different forms, of the different versions of 10.5 times 10 to the power of zero, right? So is a decimal, it's 10.5, is a fraction, 21.2, is a mixed fraction and so on and so forth, right? But of course, we just want our answer is a decimal, it's just 10.5. So I was just showing you guys, because some students, they might not be in a position to know how to do that. Right. So our time is 10.5. And what are the units of time? Is it months? Is it years? Is it weeks? Yes. yes. Why did you say yes? Why is our time in years? Why is it the, the interest rate is uh -huh. per year. Yes, excellent. It's coded per year. So that means when you're calculating your time, the units taken are these ones. You get them from the rate of interest. If it's per year, then the time is in years. If it was per month, then your time was going to be in months. So checking on the given options, option number four is the correct answer. So question three, the correct answer is option number 